It is our pleasure to share with you today's feast day of Saint Therese. In Carmel, she was known as Saint Therese of the Infant Jesus and in Holy Face. She died at a very tender age of 24 years. Living in Africa, we might say, well, what can a person so young teach us? What can she tell us. The culture says that no, it's not the young, it's the, it's the older, the wazays, those who are experienced in life, those who have gained a certain wisdom, a knowledge through human experience. What kind of experience did Saint Therese acquire in such a brief space of time? And what's shocking, what's surprising, is the fact that she never left her enclosure, her monastery, her convent. And yet, she's declared by the church to be the co-patroness of the mission. So we ask ourselves, what is her secret? How did God reveal to her at such a young age this vast knowledge this vast spiritual knowledge. St. Therese was like us. She wanted to be happy. She sought happiness in her life, but she also realized that there were obstacles to happiness. Those obstacles that we all experience in life, for instance, sickness, suffering, pain, our human environment. But these same obstacles or problems or issues were the very grist for the mill of happiness for St. Therese. She realized that she wanted to be many things. She wanted to be a warrior, a martyr, a priest, an apostle, but she couldn't be any of these things. And yet, she could be all of these things because she realized, reflecting on Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that if she loved and loved deeply, she could be all these things and more. That was her secret, to love with the heart of Jesus. She realized that if she loved in the heart of the church, that her loving actions would give power, would give authority to all these people who had specific roles in the church. And she realized too that these actions, these loving actions, required sacrifice, pain, and yes, suffering. St. Therese became so good about this, so practiced, that near the end of her life, she was able to say that she could no longer suffer, that all suffering was joyful. Can we say that? To my ears, it sounds very challenging. How can you be happy in suffering? We might say, well, this was simply a cloistered Carmelite nun in a far distant uh, place. That's what enabled her to reach this height of perfection. Therese says no, that this perfection, this happiness, this joy is available, accessible to everyone. And that is really the message of Vatican II, that holiness is for everyone, not just for cloistered Carmelite sisters, but for everyone. And she lived that. So how does the teaching of St. Therese translate into concrete terms? If we turn to Sister Marie of St. Joseph, <laughs> we find someone who is psychologically unbalanced. She was, would, she was what we would call a manic depressive or a bipolar. In other words, she would have mood swings from great highs to great lows. In addition to that, 
she was prone to outbursts of violent anger. She was a person who was very difficult to live with. And as a consequence, all the sisters avoided her. They didn't want to be around her. Uh, when the sisters would have recreation, St. Therese made a point to sit with her because none of the other sisters would sit with this Sister Marie. And she would talk to her and cheer her. She worked in the linen room and again, no one wanted to work with her, so she was alone there. You can imagine the kind of lonely life she felt she experienced in the Carmel. Therese, a year before she died, she asked to work with this sister in the linen room. And this is what Therese writes. This year, God has given me the grace to understand what charity is. I understood it before, but in an imperfect way. Ah, I understand now that charity consists in bearing the faults of others in not being surprised at their weakness, in being edified by the smallest acts of virtue we see them practice. And then she also said, I found her presence difficult to bear, even oppressive at times. But then Therese says that she was truly edified by her smallest acts of virtue because I knew they took all of her strength. She also said about her that certain infirmities like Sister Marie's are chronic that there is no hope of a cure. Did that discourage St. Therese? It did not. She reached out to her. She was charitable to her. And so you might ask, well, what happened to Sister Marie? <laughs> she was very grateful, even to the time of her death, to St. Therese. And she wrote to the Carmel in 1929 she wrote the following to Pauline, Mother Agnes, the superior. The work of sanctification, which my beloved Therese began so lovingly in me before she died, still continues. And I can say in all sincerity that my house is at rest. And I live now in complete abandonment. As long as I love Jesus, and he and Therese are pleased. Nothing else matters to me. So where does this all lead? I think we can conclude that happiness in life is something that is available to each of us. We must take, like St. Therese, our ordinary humdrum and in many cases uneventful lives and unite them to the sufferings of Jesus on the cross in love. In our acceptance of these pains and sufferings, we will find the new life of the resurrection. We ask that St. Therese will help us in a special way. Let us pray to her. St. Teresa of the infant Jesus and the holy face, pray for us now and forever. Thank you.